Okay, we appear to be live. So, there it is. Okay. Testing the audio. Okay, we appear audio is good. All right, so we have Ubisoft is up next. Um after this, uh later on tonight will be PlayStation and then that will be the end of the E3 coverage for the year for me. There will be more news coming out in between the press conferences, but uh I'm not going to be touching on too much of that. You might hear me talk about it in videos or live streams later on but as you can see on the screen right now we have about four minutes <clears throat> so let's try and give a good rundown of what i expect to see and what i hope to see um this is ubisoft there are dozens of franchises that are probably going to be shown a few that might not be and a few that i really want to be that haven't been in a while uh, one of which has been hinted at and might confirm even more of that Walmart Canada leak uh, being Splinter Cell. I really want a new Splinter Cell. It's been forever. Hello, Ronnie. <clears throat> if if that is true, if there is a new Splinter Cell coming out, I'm going to be very excited about that. I really want that. Uh, you're obviously going to see Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You're obviously going to see The Crew 2, Division 2, and... Uh, um, I'm sure there's other stuff that I'm just not capable of thinking of right now, but, um, probably the biggest thing is going to be, uh, Skull and Bones, because that went over really well last year. Um, it also wouldn't surprise me if they teased another Ghost Recon. It's been long enough for them to throw out a teaser, and then maybe it comes out in, like, another year or two. Um... They're also usually really good about small little indie style games. Like Ubisoft publishes a lot of smaller uh, scale games. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some of that. Um, and they're also very good about announcing new things that you don't expect. So there might be something that nobody is even aware of its existence yet. Uh, that will come out of this. But we're gonna. I'm gonna follow the same general concept here. Uh, keep myself silent throughout the actual conference, and I'll come back at the end and just kind of discuss a little bit. Uh, Ronnie is in chat, though I do believe he is actually working right now, so I don't know how much of it he will see, but he might be able to discuss and whatnot a little bit. Another thing I expect to see. It would surprise me to no end if they didn't show off some form of DLC for something that is currently on the market. Whether that be Rainbow Six, uh, For Honor, maybe one of the Far Cry DLCs that hasn't come out yet, um, South Park even. It, it could be a DLC for any of their existing titles. They usually show something off in the DLC like mindset. Um, we will see if they do that. They could change things up, but Ubisoft pretty much won E3 last year, for lack of a better term, with the stuff that they showed. So, who knows? We will see. Um, if they can pull that off again, I'd be a little surprised, because right now, Microsoft is ahead by a mile. They really are. Like, I loved Bethesda's, but Microsoft just had an all-around good year in this case, and they proved that they're listening to people while Bethesda, everything they announced was pretty much inevitable. It was just a matter of time. But at this point, I think they're about to start. I can't hear them any better than you can. But it does say about 20 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. I'm going to turn this on, make it full screen. And I'll see you guys when we get back. show we have exclusive gameplay from the division two you definitely don't want to miss this enjoy the show Bye. Have fun. We cannot wait to show you what we have today, and I can promise you it's more interesting than a keychain. Oh. 
too soon, maybe yeah. too soon. I don't know, up in the balcony, are you guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Down on the main floor, are you guys ready? Let's go, players. All right, everybody, everybody at home, are you ready? Yes, yes, yes. we're just gonna assume that they're ready. <laughs> well, if you're ready for the biggest gaming, uh, biggest Big show, show in gaming, then let's start the show. Let's do it! Let's do it!
cook. Do you hear me? Roger, Uma. Half the crew is dead drunk in my sick bay. After eating your miraculous space chili. Any thoughts? Well, I have no idea what you mean. Our food is healthy. Mm, invigorating. Captain to crew, dead monkey in the crow's nest. I repeat, monkey down. El Space Chili strikes again. Copy that, Captain. Hey, Paige, bet we could use your Space Chili to overclock our engines. Negativo, mi amor. Only you can melt my circuits. Uh, keep laughing, fools. The key ingredient to good cooking is love. Engineering to officers, we are dead in the water. I repeat, main engines are cursed. Nox, come in. What have we got on the scanners? Jack shit. Nada. Hey, 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 wait. I see something. Three o'clock starboard. It, it's massive. I right, get back here, Shani. Hold off! <laughs> Gabrielle Schrager, narrative director. And I'm Guillaume Brunier, senior producer. We are so happy to be back this year to share our progress on our space opera, Beyond Good and Evil 2, a game full of wonder, emotion, danger, and high stakes drama. Last year, you all saw the enigmatic green eyed Captain Dakini leading the legendary crew of the Gata on a quest to discover the location and the mystery behind a deep space artifact known as Moksha. But the Kini has since gone missing. Shani is now captain of the Gada, and she's leading her crew into the deep, unexplored space beyond System 3, when they come face to face with their nemesis. Fans will have recognized a ferocious young Jade. <laughs> <laughs> and Paige is back as the incorrigible chief cook of the Gada. We've got two other officers, Uma, the holistic chief medic, and Callum, our chief engineer. And all of these legendary characters will be playing a major role in our prequel. Today, we are proud to represent our growing production team in Montpellier, Barcelona, Bordeaux, and Sofia. Thanks, everyone, for making it happen. Thank you. Thank you for them. Thank you. Thank you for them. In, B in, B in BGE2, you are a space pirate captain in a distant galaxy near the end of the 24th century. Yep. At this year's E3, we will be showcasing a new behind-closed-doors demo offering a first <laughs> look 
at our major location, the sacred city of Ganesha. Now, let's take a look at our first pre-alpha gameplay footage. Ganesha is a metropolis filled with sacred temples, beautiful gardens, and bustling shops. But it's also a darker underworld, rife with dirty bars and dangerous back alleys. Our game is an action-adventure RPG that you can play alone or with your friends in co-op. From the intimate interior of a hidden temple to the very edge of the galaxy, fight on the ground and in space at massively different scales. And all of this seamlessly. seamlessly. <laughs> what you will be seeing at E3 this year is only a very small part of a much larger open universe we are creating. A universe we are also building with our fans. Yeah, let's go. With Beyond Good and Evil 2, we want our community to participate in a way that's never been done before through the Space Monkey program. We want our fans and people all over the world to really be a part of creating the game. So today, we are issuing an open invitation for people all over the world to contribute their ideas, music, artworks, and create original content that players will experience as they explore the world of Beyond Good Evil 2. And there is literally a universe of ways for artists to express themselves, from giant frescoes to murals, street art, music, radio content, and much more. To do this, we have partnered with a company at the forefront of community collaboration, Hit Record. And here to tell us more is their founder, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Hello! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I love this theater. So thanks, thanks to you guys, thanks Guillaume, and, and thanks to Gabrielle, it's really good to be here. Um, I'm super excited to do this. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Hit Record is this thing that I've been making for a long, long time, it's really dear to me, and uh, it's a place where people all over the world work together on short films or music or art, all kinds of projects. This is the first time we're making stuff that's gonna go into a video game. Um, so it's a little bit different than other like creative platforms um, that you can find on the internet because the point of Hit Record, it isn't just to post and promote stuff that you've made on your own. The point is to collaborate. So, like when we're making music for Beyond Good and Evil 2, it's not just going to be a thing like a contest where people submit songs and then we pick one or two of them and we put them in the game. We're going to be really making the songs together. And the same goes for the visual assets that we'll be creating. So, whether you're a writer, uh, a musician, an illustrator, if you're a pro-level artist, or if you're just someone who really cares about Beyond Good and Evil and that world and you love it and you want to be a part of it, there's going to be ways for you to contribute. Um, our first creative challenges are live. As of like now, someone's at my office pushing the button, like very nervous. <laughs> you guys are doing great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so come to our site, check out the Beyond Good and Evil 2 page at hitrecord.org. And, um, that's it. Go do that shit. Thanks. <laughs> Hit Record's approach to community co collaboration is inspiring, and we're incredibly happy to be working with Joseph and his team. And we really can't wait to see what the community creates. So let's do it. Me too. We will be showcasing some of this content at our very first dedicated community event, the BG Fest, which will take place in Montpellier this fall. Thanks, everyone. Have a great E3. Thank you. What's up, everyone? My name is Justin Kruger, community developer on Rainbow Six Siege. And I'm here today to talk about our community. Our community that inspires us and drives us every single day. 
The Siege team back in Montreal has actually been so inspired by seeing all of the millions of people playing our game every single day uh, over the past two and a half years. We've actually absolutely loved seeing our community grow, and I'm excited to announce today that the Rainbow Six Siege community is now 35 million players. Yes, thank you. I wish I could hug every single one of you, but I don't know if my arms are big enough to hug every single one of you. Uh, that would take a long time as well. Uh, as you can see, as the, the community grows, so does the game. And as you can see behind me, Team Rainbow has recruited the Italian GIS operators, Maestro and Alibi. Actually, this image represents 10 seasons, 40 operators, and 19 maps that is all free in-game. And if you want to get to know all of these guys a little bit better, uh, uh, you can play Operation P uh, Parabellum, which is playable right now. And if you want to see them in action at the top of their game, tune into the Rainbow Six Siege Pro League, kicking off on June 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The world's biggest esport teams will be competing for six months of intense Rainbow Six action. And that's just one of the many ways to enjoy competitions for Rainbow Six. The sixth major is just around the corner and will be hosted in Paris this August. Our Pro League Finals will then take us to Brazil in November. Yeah, Brazil. And then the sixth Invitational will once again be the pinnacle of Rainbow Six, taking place in Montreal in February 2019. Yeah. So whether you're a player or just a fan of esports, there really is no better time to get into Rainbow Six Esports. And with the growth of the game, the community, and the esports teams, we wanted to take a, a, a moment to reflect on some of our most influential players. Today, I'm excited to unveil a sneak peek at an upcoming documentary that is focused on a few familiar faces who took their love for Siege to the next level. Without further ado, here's the first look at Another Mindset. That is like the greatest injury to ever happen to me, only because uh, it brought siege to me. I've been doing this for what? Since year one, season one, right? And I failed, 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 and then finally we started succeeding. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back. Eu recebi um sorriso, uma lágrima, uma emoção, um riso de uma das pessoas que eu nunca vi na minha vida, que eram torcedores da BD. Acho que você tem que realmente botar toda a sua emoção dentro do jogo.
is all about crashing with style and getting up again. Hello! I'm Antil Vasso, creative director of trials and also prime minister of Finland. <laughs> now I'm pleased to announce the trials is back and it's bigger than ever. Sorry about that. <laughs> Trials Rising takes you around the world to iconic locations. You never ride alone and competition is everywhere. But competition is nothing without the players and our community has always been a pillar of trials. In Trials Rising, we work with our players more than ever. To explain more, let me introduce Brad Hill, also known as Professor Fat Sadie. You made a mess. <laughs> well, thank you, Auntie, and hello, everyone. See, OTHD down the front. I see you. I became a fan of trials because it's challenging, but so rewarding when you overcome something difficult. But I soon realized that a number of play players struggled with the harder levels. So in 2013, I created the University of Trials, a YouTube channel dedicated to mastering trials writing. Now, before I go on, Ubisoft star players, I want you guys to make some big noise right now. All right, well, five years ago, I was a star player just like them. But when Red Links began work on Trials Rising, they approached me to design and create all of the tutorial content within the game. It has been an amazing experience for me, but I wasn't the only one involved. <clears throat> 20 community members known as the Trials Elite, up there, have been involved in the development of this game for the last two years. Whether they were track builders, streamers, or speedrunners, each brought something special to help shape this game. Now, if you want to get involved, register online at trialsgame.com for a closed beta happening later this year. Good. Is it? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, 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 hey. What? You don't, we're not going to put a big coming soon up here. Oh, I think oh. people are going to want another release date. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Trials Rising will release on February 2019 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and the first time ever also Nintendo Switch. <laughs> if you are E3, come to our booth and we'll show what Trials is about. Crashing with style and getting up again. Let's get out. Let's go. Thank you, Let's everyone. Go. Have a nice E3. Yeah.
My name is Julian Garrity, and I'm the creative director on Tom Clancy's The Division Two. <laughs> on Black Friday, a strain of the smallpox virus was released on dollar bills in New York City. The infection and chaos spread across the nation. Seven months later, the virus has mostly burnt itself out, but America is tearing itself apart. Washington, D.C. is at the heart of this battle. Under constant threat from dangerous factions, civilians are trying to rebuild. In their survival lies the seed for the rebirth of society. You are the last line of defense for those civilians and for the country. If you fail, history will be written by tyrants. If you succeed, history 
will remember the few brave heroes who fought to save a dying nation. This setting lays the groundwork for a compelling story-based campaign in which your actions have a clear impact on the lives of civilians. In the Division II, Washington, D.C. must prepare for the greatest threat it has ever encountered. To face it, you and your fellow agents will need to bring your equipment and tactical abilities to the next level. Once agents reach the end of the main campaign, it's time to select a new progression path by picking a specialization. It starts with the choice of a signature weapon, powerful and unique weapons that complement the rest of your equipment. As you progress with your specializations, you will not only grow in power, but also unlock additional tools and abilities, including exclusive versions of skills. Specializations enable you to truly complete your own personal playstyle, but also to synergize with other players and take team play even further. Speaking of teamwork, I'm excited to announce that for the first time, eight players will be able to partner up to face the ultimate endgame challenge. Raids are coming to the Division Two. We learned a lot. We learned a lot from working on the first game. And with the Division Two, we're launching with plans for years of frequent major content updates. Today, we're ready to outline our plans for year one. We will be launching three DLCs in the form of episodes. Each one will bring new story, new areas to explore, and new activities. And the best part? All of these episodes will be completely free for everyone. Where's my division team? Stay tuned after the Ubisoft conference for an exclusive 30-minute deep dive into our playable E3 demo during our post-show. As you can see, they're getting ready right now, and they'll be playing right after the conference is done. <laughs> Until then, remember, this is history's defining moment. Hope for the future lies in you, agents of the division. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Xavier Manzanares, lead producer. And it's an honor to be back here one year after we announced for the first time and released the game. It was incredible. So as a team, I just wanted to thank all of you for the support and all the feedbacks we received. Thank you. So we also started a year ago to work on a brand new adventure and with a brand new hero as well, one that we cherish and we love, Donkey Kong. So for today, uh, we wanted to uh, celebrate the upcoming release of the Donkey Kong Adventure. And uh, what better with music than with Grant Kirkhope, our composer, and the band Critical Hits. So please enjoy. Thank you. Changed your entrance, so it I changes apologize. every day, every second to change. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Boy. It was over. The old guard was wiped out. Those who kneeled were now at the gates of hell. They were killing us off, burning our seas from shore to shore. We thought there was no way the Empire could win this game. As fate would have it, the tide turned in our favor again. A new wind was at our backs, blowing us straight to heaven. In our new Eden, there was only one rule. First come, first serve. It was dog eat dog. We became kings, queens, lords and masters of our own new worlds. Fortunes poured down on us. They had their empire. Now it was our turn. Enemies became friends. Friends became enemies. The best didn't trust anybody. The philosophy of the day was more and more. We were alone at the top of the food chain. thought we were. In a dog-eat-dog -dog world, we were wolves. And wolves hunting packs. Skull and bones, there are soulless empires. There are greedy trading companies, and of course, ruthless pirate games sailing the seas. But there are no heroes. Hello, my name is Justin Farron, creative director at Ubisoft Singapore. And for the past year, my team and I have been anxiously awaiting this moment to invite you, our fans, to join the hunt here at E3 2018. Piracy is dead in the Caribbean. The empires crushing all those who oppose them. So your next big score? The Indian Ocean, home to the richest trade routes in the world, where merchant ships carry cargo worth over $10 billion a year. And you? You're going to steal every last fucking coin. First, you need a target. You pick up intel on a heavily guarded frigate, fat with African diamonds meant for the Grand Mogul of India. That treasure will help you claw your way to the top to become the pirate that no empire can take down. Second, you must know your hunting ground. Our reactive and evolving world is reflected in what we call fortunes, presented to you by Taljeed, the fortune teller. Now, fortunes reveal changes in factions, weather, and the trade routes themselves. Today, Taljeed reveals favorable winds. That means more merchants to rob, but also more competition. And now I'm proud to share with you the essence of Skull and Bones, a shared world where every player encounter matters. Will you fight or will you ally? This is what we call the hunting grounds. All right, pirates. Let's head to the hideout and have a great E3. Your hunt for the convoy starts here, in your hideout, deep within the Chagos Islands. This hidden pirate den provides everything you need for your next strike. From your shipyard, you choose the Black Horn for the upcoming battle. The strong winds will boost its speed, giving its battering ram a devastating punch. Five, is gonna break? Next, choose the right crew and gear for the mission ahead. Demi cannons are slow loading, but deadly at short range. Rockets are blazing fast, and 
deal powerful damage from every angle. With everything loaded, let's head out. The winds are strong and the day is clear. That means more merchants to rob, but also more rival pirates out looking for a quick score. According to your intel, the convoy is sailing past a Portuguese fort, taking advantage of the strong winds. There she is, with our loot! That fort is too strong to simply sail past. Its cannons can blast you out of the water. You need to find a way to sneak by before the convoy slips away. Rex, sighty, Captain! Fortunately, deception is another tool in the pirate's arsenal. Let's fool these blackguards! Disguised as a Portuguese merchant, you try to creep past the fort. Captain, if we engage, they will see it through our guides. Portuguese merchant and escort! This island provides perfect cover for a surprise attack. Plot the optimal course for an intercept, rigging your sails for speed. You want to catch your victim off guard. Captain, there she is! Fire she bangs! Portuguese warship. At the helm is a Commodore. Too tough to handle on your own. Even worse, you could lose your loot. You need help, and you need it fast. That one's with us! Other captains have answered your call. Four against one should even the odds. side forms a tight squadron using a coordinated battle plan. The enemy strikes first. The first ship goes down, breaking your formation. Cannons on you. You brace for fire, absorbing the first blow. Your allies maneuver for position. The Royal Fortune acts as a tank, drawing the Commodore's fire. It unleashes its special ability, Siege Mode. Once anchored, it can fire its cannons without limits. The Jaeger slips into position with its powerful cannon. Its special ability delivers eight shots in a single blast, increasing the odds for a critical hit. The Royal Fortune can't hold out much longer. It's up to you to land the killing blow. Is one. 
But the glitter of gold can turn new allies into deadly enemies. For there is no honor among thieves. My name is Elijah Wood, co-founder of Spectre Vision. Though we're known for our film content, we're also avid gamers, and the opportunity to partner with Ubisoft was something we had to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And my name is Benoit Chi, game director on Transference. <laughs> <laughs> Together, we combine the storytelling techniques of film with the interactivity of video games, enabling us to create this unique, deeply immersive world with a dark and unsettling narrative. Have you ever dreamed of entering someone else's consciousness, exploring their darkest thoughts and most intimate secrets? In Transference, with Transference, we're bringing a... No. With Transference, we're bringing a first-person <laughs> exploration game into a chilling new dimension. To escape, you must go hands-on to search for clues, solve puzzles while shifting between the perspectives of each family member, and attempt to piece together their mystery. This fall, in VR and on traditional platforms, we welcome you to uncover the secrets hiding in this mind-bending psychological thriller that will leave you with haunting memories long after you put down the controller. This is Transference. What's going on? Okay. Where's Mom? You're gonna sit here real soon, okay? Just hold still. Don't believe his lies. Okay, are you comfortable? I know this rig's a bit cumbersome, but that's always the way with these new prototypes, huh? <gasps> and all you have to do is just... just be. I know things haven't been so great lately, okay? Some I do. Big men. I've been a lousy father, huh? I'm unable. I'm lousy husband, too. You should go to sleep. You've seen how rotten that's gotten, huh? But all that is gonna change. We're all gonna be together. All of our hard work. Reverse the process. All of our sacrifices. That's my gift to you. Us. Help me! Help me! Please! Dad? Why are you doing this? I love you. Son. I love you with all of my heart. enough of us. We need to find help from every planet in Atlas.
The more of us there are, the stronger each of us is. Exactly. You must feed my legion. <laughs> Grax isn't going to stop until we end this. I will finish this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Laurel Melville, creative director on Starlink Battle for Atlas. Last year, revealed our modular Starship innovation to the world and showed you how players could reconfigure it instantly to adapt to any challenge. This year, we're excited to show you what the, the depth of the open world that we've built and put the game directly into your hands. We're going to take you on a journey. 400 light years away from Earth to the Atlas star system. Discover exotic planets, meet fascinating local factions, and forge your alliance. Upgrade your pilots, starships, and gear, and unleash devastating combos to save Atlas from the relentless Forgotten Legion. The mission will not be easy. Atlas is a dangerous place and our heroes will need all the help they can get. Could use a little help here. Can you hear me? Damn it. boys. to welcome Star Fox in Starlink, Battle for Atlas. Isn't it, Laurent? It's amazing. <laughs> Ever since I started working on Starlink, I wanted to invite Fox and his crew into the game. And Star Fox on Super Nintendo was the first 3D game I've ever played, and I'll never forget that. And so for me, this moment is a dream come true. And this dream was only made possible thanks to our long relationship with Nintendo. We can't wait to play Fox on the Nintendo Switch. I would like to give, you, to give a special thanks to a dear friend with, with us in the audience today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Miyamoto. <laughs> How are you? So I, I know you were coming today, so I came with a gift. You know, it's the first prototype of the vessel that you we such so. Do you like it? 
Super. Super. So thank you very much. Um, so it, it is uh, actually um, a vessel that has been created by the team, and they, they would be so happy to see you backstage. So let's go and join them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miyamoto, and thank you, Eve, For everyone at E3, please be sure to come by the Ubisoft booth, where we'll have a full hands-on demo for you to try. For everyone else, Starlink will launch on all consoles on October 16th with Star Fox as an exclusive Nintendo Switch experience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Check out starlinkgame.com to pre-order the game right after the conference. Thank you so much for being here today, and have a great E3. Streamers, cosplayers, artists, tournament organizers, and all of our players, you are for honor. Indeed. Hello, I'm Roman Campo Soyola, Creative Director. Whether it be upgraded stability with the dedicated servers, release of heroes, constant balancing, and new training tools, we would not be here without your passion and commitment. You've helped us enrich the experience. Thank you. Please. But actions speak louder than words, right? In celebration of E3, we are inviting new players to join. So if you haven't played For Honor yet, now is your chance. Starting today and until next Monday, we are giving away the PC Starter Edition on Uplay. Download it this week on PC, and it's yours for free. So come, join the fight with us. But that's not all. Because building on everything that we've learned, we are now ready to expand our world.
After the great cataclysm that brought knights, vikings, and samurai to fight, civil war consumed China. Warriors of the Wulin factions fought each other, but failed to establish order. Amid the chaos, four warriors of the Wulin now march west. With a new faction, four new fighters, visual enhancements, and single-player content yet to be revealed, the Marching Fire update is our biggest and most ambitious addition so far. But this update would not be complete without answering a huge request from our community. A new 4v4 multiplayer mode fulfilling the classic medieval fantasy. You know what it is? The Castle Siege. So please, allow me to introduce you to this new mode, Breach. I'm Delphine Dosset, brand director on The Crew 2. In just a few days, freedom will be yours. Freedom to get your hands on your dream car, bike, boat, or plane, and unleash your passion for motorsports all across the United States. The Crew 2 releases on June 29th, and we are very happy to announce that the open beta will be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, on June 21st. But there's more. You can preload the open beta right now, so you'll be ready to hit the road as soon as it starts. From all of us at Ivory Tower, welcome to The Crew 2.
can a child save us all? If he's sentenced to die. Tell me, Nikolaus. Tell me before you let our son go. Father? No! Where we begin does not define who we will become. Before you, I see a path. Built by friendship and family. Love and loss. War and bloodshed. You were sent by the gods to protect this world. You carry the blade of Leonidas. Act like it. As you write your odyssey across the mountains and the seas, remember, the fate of Greece journeys with you. Thank you, thank you. I'm Jonathan Dumont, creative director of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey is more than just an adventure. It truly is a role-playing journey. You will explore on land and sea one of the most iconic and influential settings in human history, ancient Greece. The golden age of Athens saw the rise of democracy, modern medicine, revolutionary art, and Western philosophy. But it was also a time of war, a devastating conflict between Sparta and Athens. The Peloponnesian War divided the Greek world and changed the course of history. In this world of contrast and opportunity, this land shaped by the gods rages a battle between order and chaos. This is where your adventure begins. You, a simple mercenary, an outcast, to take on an incredible quest to save your loved ones and become the legendary Greece, uh, Greek hero uh, Greece desperately needs. Our teams in Quebec and from around the world have spent the last three years putting all their energy, passion, and dedication into this project. We have continued to transform Assassin's Creed into an epic RPG experience. An RPG in which you will not just play an Odyssey, but your Odyssey, shaped by your actions and choices. And the first choice you'll make at the start of the game is to choose your character. <laughs> Alexios, or Cassandra. And you play that character for the entire game. You share the bloodline of a legendary Spartan hero and bear his mysterious weapon. Your turn. Leonidas' spear! You're old enough now. My father's spear holds a certain burden, but you are ready. Think of Leonidas. He had great courage, and he made a great sacrifice. You share in his blood and the strength he possessed. The broken spear of Leonidas gives you access to powerful range, 
combat, and stealth abilities that you can unleash on your enemies. And for the first time, we have deeply changed the way we tell stories in Assassin's Creed. You can now truly interact with history like never before. <laughs> Perhaps when I was thinner, both in weight and philosophy. So, tell me, were you able to resolve the situation without bloodshed? The rebel had guards. I relieved them. Hmm, interesting. You thought the life of a thief and a murderer was worth more than that of soldiers doing their duty. I wasn't even thinking about him, to be honest. And what of the rebel? He should be halfway to Mykonos by now. Oh, really? You let that lunatic run loose? Are you sure that was wise? I'm not sure approaching you was wise. Our choices are like ripples on water. They seem tiny and insignificant at the beginning, but they can become devastating tidal waves by the time they run their course. Over the next few days, you can experience this for yourself here at E3 in our playable demo. And for you at home, here's a full gameplay sequence of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Thank you, have a great E3. Mykonos Island, built from the corpses of giants slain by the legendary Iraklis. Read me the note again. Eagle bearing Mystios, that's you. We are a small but fierce group of rebels who'd pay you handsomely to help us overthrow our Athenian oppressors. A warrior named Theocles fights with them. None who face him survive. Please, Mystios. Our people are dying. Signed, Kira. What did your informant tell you? Word has already spread of you sinking those ships. There's a price on your head. Whew, that didn't take long. There's also word of Spartans landing on Mykonos. So, I'm here to find Kira, who wants me to kill the Oclis. An Athenian ally. Who's at war with Sparta? And don't forget the bounty! Business as usual, then. <laughs> Gods protect you, Cassandra. Thanks, Varnavas. But they'll be too busy protecting the Ocles from me. We've been spotted! Go! I'll handle this! Fight them for all your worth! Ella. Can't be good. Your chance. 
chasing your own death, mercenary. You won't escape me! You want my head? Come and take it! You can't defeat me! Should have left me alone. Navas was right. Spartans have made themselves right at home. I'm looking for Kira. What do you want with her? Ha! The mercenary who bears the Eagle of Zeus. You got my message. It said something about paying me handsomely. <laughs> Mercenaries. Athenians have enslaved our people for too long. Help us free Mykonos from their grasp, and you'll have more Rahmi than you can carry. I'm here to kill the Ocles, not go to war. Which is why I sent word of our rebellion to you and Sparta. My men are ferocious in a ground assault. But we're outnumbered. And the Ocles fights with the fury of Ares. Join us in battle. If you're half the warrior Kira says you are, we'll grind these Athenians into dust. All right, Spartan. I'll fight with you. But the Ocles is mine. To battle, then.
Hi, everyone. And thank you for joining us. And thanks to everyone watching from home. To our teams, it's an honor to work with some of the best in the world. Congratulations on a great show. Yeah. I am a good. I am an I am an optimistic guy, and I am particularly excited about the future of technology and the positive role games will play in shaping our society. To create these games, we need to work even more openly with you, the gamers, because we know when we do that together, everything gets better. So have a great history. Thank you very much. So no major surprises there. Uh, we have a release date for Assassin's Creed being uh, this year, which part of me is a little bit annoyed with because I only just got around to uh, finishing uh, Origins, and now I have another ridiculously massive play couple months so that's gonna be fun um beyond good and evil 2 looks amazing like that game looks ridiculous and i can't see more of that though i don't think I'm playing it anytime soon trials rising is nice um i'm not really super into the trials games but it's definitely cool to see them working with fans of like that eight player raids for the division is cool as hell, so that scares me in terms of that game, because I'm sort of missed, and I never got around to finishing the first game because they kind of just stopped supporting it, and now they're making the second one, which now uh, eight-player raids kind of scares me because I have a hard enough time getting four people together to play a game. Donkey Kong Adventure for Mario and Rabbids might actually get me to play that game, because Donkey Kong is have been on the channel long enough, you might have heard some uh, Donkey Kong music uh, from time to time. Um, also, I do a playthrough of Donkey Kong Country a while back. Skull and Bones is ex it's still exciting, because it's, uh, it's not as uh, crew-based as Sea of Thieves. I, I like the fact that each player has their own ship and up. But I it's still very loot based and like the whole betrayal mechanic. It, it's basically division water. Um, transference looks interesting. Um, actually again, similar concept to, uh, the quiet man from the square Enix press conference in that it transitions back and forth between what looked like live action and actual rendered gameplay. I, I don't know what to expect from that. It's nice that that Starlink game is going to have star Fox in it. So I feel like Ninja definitely do something with that character themselves rather than just shoehorning it into another game. Um, the China DLC for For Honor. For Honor's not really a game that I've ever been interested in. They came out and mentioned the crew too, even though it comes out in like two weeks. And then you had Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which everybody was expecting. It looks great, but again... I just finished Origins and didn't even play the DLC for Origins, and now I have another game coming out. And it popped up during the stream that they have a collector's edition. I went looking for it, but I couldn't find it. So I don't know. Uh, we will definitely see. But uh, yeah, that was that was definitely a thing. Um, easily the uh, the strangest thing for me in terms of this conference was Beyond Good and Evil 2. I never played the first one, but the character Jade doesn't look any younger than she did in the first game, and this is supposed to be a prequel. So like, I don't know how that works. I Because mean, I, I remember them saying originally that that character wasn't even going to be in it, neither was a uh, big dude in the first game, and it was going to be a completely different thing that just took place in the same universe. Like years, hundreds of years before... 
and now apparently that's not the case. But I mean, it's all very exciting. I was surprised to not see any new IPs. Like not a single new IP was announced. That that that's surprising for me. But I mean, there's really not much here to get super deep into. I, I will admit the division does excite me. Um, as hard as it was to get me to play the first game, because I kind of started late uh, with the first one. Uh, this one I will probably pick up at launch. Go through. If I can find a decent. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. That's pretty much all the coverage for the Ubisoft stuff. Uh, we will be back in a few hours couple hours however long i think it starts at 9 p.m it is now currently 5 30 so about three and a half hours and we'll be back with sony which is the big one for me i think everybody but sony's pretty much already outlined everything we're gonna see there might be some surprises but i honestly don't expect much we'll see until then i want to thank everybody for watching and everybody for tuning in and joining me in this i will be back later until then Ta-ta.